Okay, we're out here today working on this jet ski. This is a uh, 91 Yamaha VXR 650. Um, picked this one up for 200 bucks off Marketplace. Uh, the guy I bought it from, he'd been working on uh, replacing the starter motor. He got that replaced, but he never got around to putting it all back together. So we're gonna get this cleaned up. Probably hose down the inside. Got some nasty looking water in there. Um, just looks really gross. Really windy day today though. It's already rained a couple times since I started this video, but uh, hopefully no tree branches fall on us or anything like that. We do get quite a few that fall in my yard. As you can see, that's a stack of them right there. Um, makes, makes for some good uh, bonfires though. So we're gonna get this hose down, get to work on it, um, get this all cleaned up start putting the exhaust back on hopefully there's nothing wrong with it okay so after getting started on this got really cloudy got really windy so i moved out from under those trees over there back to this area um, just wanted to do it over there just because i mean the lighting's much better in the shade so we're gonna power wash the inside of this out real quick i've got any openings on the engine covered with some uh fabric stuff like that just make sure we don't get any water in there. We're just going to hit the hull, get it as clean as possible, and just hose the water out the back through the uh, rain plug. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is remove this old gasket on here. Okay, we got most of the gasket off. I sanded down this one. We're just gonna hit this one with some sandpaper too, some 400 grit. Just get it smooth, smooth enough to fit the gasket without having anything uh, popping up or breaking that seal, so.
Okay, we got all the exhaust parts right here that we're taking off. Got the main muffler part right here. Here's the, uh, whoops, there go all the bolts I had set up. But got all the bolts right here. Um, we're going to fix the new gasket to this and then match it up with the ports on the motor. Yeah, this new gasket off eBay, part number 6M6-14613-A0. Found the part number on uh, YamahaPartsHouse.com, I believe. And then uh, just search for it on eBay because it's a little cheaper there. There we go, there's the new gasket. Match this over. Slide this over, just like that. Okay, I got the bolts removed right now. Um, so we're just gonna slide this in with the gasket, just pressed up against, hold it in there with your fingers. Just put these in by hand first. Get these tightened down. Okay, we're gonna reinstall this plate now. So I decided to pull out all the old gas that was in the tank, um, and this is what it looks like. It's been sitting out here for a little bit, so it's got a bunch of bugs and crap that's fallen in it. But if you look closely, you can see that almost the majority of all the gas in this bucket is actually water. So I think that's our main problem. Um, I guess there's a bunch of water in the gas tank, so even when it was pumping gas into it, it wasn't... Uh, wasn't igniting just because there's so much water. So I already pulled the plugs, already cranked it over a couple times just to uh, make sure that we got all the water out. Um, we're gonna fill up the gas tank with some new gasoline. Um, we're also gonna remove the uh, oil injection um, just to make sure that we don't have to worry about that. I prefer to mix my gas um, since I got two other jet skis that already use mixed gas. So we're just gonna have it run on mixed gas like the other two instead of relying on uh, oil injection or anything like that because those tend to go bad and I don't want to have to worry about that. So where all those bugs are floating, that's actually the top of the water. That's, uh, that's where the water and the gasoline are separated. You can see there's about three inches of gasoline sitting on top of that water and then underneath the water is the uh, bottom of the bucket. The bucket goes down a lot further. So.
So we're going to remove this tank along with the uh, fittings down here that go on the front of the crankcase. And then uh, just disconnect it all, pull it out, and then uh, put this then put this block on it. Um, this is from SBT. We're just going to put this on. comes with a gasket and a cover with some bolts. just goes in the spot that the uh, oil pump goes and gets rid of that oil injection so we can use premix. So that's what we're going to do right now, and then we'll finish getting the exhaust back on. So I think this is missing one of the uh, bolts that holds it on already. Um, looks like it's already been removed. Um, so we're just going to remove this one. Luckily the block kit that I bought comes with two new bolts, so we don't have to worry about finding this missing one. Okay, there we got the oil pump completely disconnected right there. Now we'll work on getting all these lines disconnected and get this uh, tank out. So. So we've got two oil connections at the carburetor right here, one right here and one right here. Um, they go in through the sides. They're just attached with zip ties um, to keep the tubing attached. So we're just going to cut the zip ties and pop these hoses off. Just pulled that one off. There we go. Yeah, pulled this one off from both sides already. So. I'll just lay that off to the side and get the other one. There we go, and there's that other one. Disconnect this from this hose so we can pull it out all the way. Now we got this hose right here that goes to the top, this hose down here that goes to the bottom of the oil tank, and then we got this hose right here which uh, actually goes around to the outside of the jet ski to uh, indicator. Um, level indicator for the oil. Um, so we just gotta disconnect this, the top of it which comes up around and pops up right here. Um, so yeah there's there's three hoses. So we got two bolts to remove this tank with. We got one right here and then one up here. So once we remove those it should pretty much come out. Um, we'll see if there's any hoses that are um, stuck behind something. I think this one might be behind this uh, cable right here, but we'll figure it out. You get that nut on the back side of there. there we go. I don't want to drop that nut. Actually, it doesn't really matter since we're not putting this back on. So. But it's nice to not have loose hardware just rolling around on the bottom. We got this one right here. Oh, there goes that bolt. We'll have to find that. Now, the goal is to get this out of here without causing a huge mess. So, let's see. We'll disconnect this top hose that goes to the level indicator on the outside of the ski. Just cut it. There we go. doing surgery. Okay, so we got this hose right here which is stuck under this. Um, that should be pretty easy. There's just a zip tie at the front of the jet ski where this uh, garden hose looking 
hose connects to, so I'll cut that real quick and then pull it back. There we go. The whole thing came off with the fitting too, so. We got this cable also. So set this right here. Cut that, pull it out, and then we'll cut this one too. sure that we don't let it leak all over the place. Okay, now we can pull this whole thing out. Just clean up some of this inside stuff, wipe it down. This should keep the inside of the ski a lot cleaner too now that you don't have to worry about oil leaking anywhere or anything like that. That's the whole oil injection system right there. You got the pump, got the tank, just all the hoses that come with it. So. It opens up a lot of space in here though to work so that'll be nice. We got the hole right there that we're going to be covering with the, uh, the block that we ordered from SBT. So this is the block kit I bought. It's parts number 36-006 this is for all Yamaha 650 and 750 engines. Also goes with uh, Kawasaki engines, I guess. Um, but yeah, I ordered this from SBT. It was about 25 bucks. Comes with a uh, gasket, two bolts, two washers, um, and a gasket. So, so just wipe this off real quick. Make sure it's nice and clean. It does have a gasket on there I'll have to remove real quick. There we go, we got that gasket off. So this comes with little plugs that you're supposed to use on the lines, um, but we don't need that because we just removed the whole um, system. So. so we got the block all assembled. We got the bolts, we got the washers, we got the block, and then the uh, gasket on the bottom. So we'll just slide this on top and just get these uh, bolts started by hand. There we go. Just get them started by hand, and then we'll uh, tighten them down with the hex wrench. go. Now we got it all blocked off and we can use premix now. So
Okay, we got some new gasoline in here mixed with some two-stroke. We're just going to pour it back into here. Let's get enough so we can test this out. going to pour a little directly in the carb just so we can uh, get it started. Pull the choke out. It's running great. Um, yeah, we didn't really have to do anything to this to get it running. Just had to put the uh, exhaust back together and uh, remove that oil injection. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get this buttoned up and we'll take it for a test spin and see how it runs on the water. So the audio on my GoPro cut out when I took this video, but I got the uh, VXR down the lake for a quick test drive. Started right up, was running great, accelerated fine, um, but that unfortunately only lasted for about uh, 30 seconds. So once I got to the opposite side of the lake, I could tell that the hull was filling with water and that the engine had been uh, put into limp mode due to some sort of overheating. Um, limp mode is usually triggered by the temperature sensor once the engine reaches a certain uh, temperature and it limits the RPM um, of the engine to prevent any damage from occurring. So I managed to limp it back to shore um, and uh, took a look at it. So while this is draining, I decided to look back here. I believe this is the main cooling line right here that leads from the uh, jet up to the front. I followed it up and would you look at that? It's not even hooked in. So we're gonna take this home, get it hooked up to the garden hose, plug this back in wherever the heck it's supposed to be, and then uh, test it out in my yard. And then uh, if it all checks out, then we should be good to go. Okay, we got the ski back at home. We've got the hose attached to this uh, inlet right here that connects to the exhaust um, water block, I guess, is what I'd call it. Um, if you'd go about testing this like this, you don't want to start the water until after the jet skis have been turned on, because if you do, you can lock the engine um, with the water by putting it in there without the engine actually running. Make sure your water's off, then you can start it. Um, once it's running and you've looked over everything, then you turn the water off and then you shut off the jet ski. We're just going to run this, 
turn on the water, look it over, see if there's uh, any actual leak in the exhaust. Um, and then we're gonna make sure we plug in um, that hose for the coolant and just verify because testing through this won't necessarily verify that the um, hose that connects to the jet drive and then to the exhaust manifold is working, but this will at least cool down and show us any uh, leaks in the exhaust um, while it's out here in my yard. So we're gonna do that real quick and see what we find. See all the water coming out the bottom here. I think I need to tighten up this. Uh, yeah, this is all loose. This clamp right here, just dripping out of there, as well as the uh, actual inlet point down there where the uh, coolant hose is supposed to, or the water hose is supposed to connect. Right here, this is the hose. We're just gonna plug that in under there. There is a nipple. Um, you can't see it right now, but it's tucked underneath the exhaust. So we're just gonna get this reconnected and then uh, drain this water and it should be good to go. Right here under the exhaust manifold is where the nipple is for the water intake for the engine. This is where we hooked up our hose. Just put a zip tie over it to secure it and we should be good to go now. So let's get it back down to the lake and uh, take it for another spin. about it for this jet ski um as you can tell it wasn't that much of a intensive project compared to some of my other things I've done but I mean 200 bucks for this jet ski that's all I had to spend on it and then on top of the 200 I just spent I think it was about 25 bucks on the uh, 
manifold gasket. We didn't run into any problems besides the coolant line, which turned out was a really easy fix and still runs great. It's a little bit faster than the other two jet skis I have, definitely has a lot more acceleration with the uh, bigger engine, 650 versus the 500, but I like it a lot. Um, so I, I'll probably keep it pink just because, I mean, you don't want to throw too much money at these things when it comes down to it. One thing I did notice though is that when I was inspecting the jet pump that the impeller has a bit of a chunk missing from it. Um, so we'll probably replace that at some point down the road, but for this summer, I mean, it serves my purposes perfectly. Maybe next summer I'll uh, do a big overhaul video for... Oh, there's fish just jump right there. But, uh, next summer maybe I'll make an overhaul video, or during the winter would actually be better because I've got some downtime, not doing anything outside. But, uh, maybe this winter I might do a uh, overhaul video for all three of my wave runners. Um, maybe look at selling two. So if uh, anyone's interested, I might be putting those up for sale. I haven't made my decision yet. Um, but yeah, because I mean, if I can get another one of these, just keep upgrading maybe once a year up until we get to something much nicer. I mean, it wouldn't be too bad of an idea. So yeah, I hope you liked this video. Hope you found it informational. That's, that's not a word, informative. Hope you found it informative, and uh, hope you stick around for some of my other videos that I've got coming along. I know my upload schedule's been pretty erratic. It's just been really busy this summer with everything opening back up again. I do videography on the side part-time, so I've been doing a lot of that too, um, as well as my main job. So that's why I don't have too much time to be uploading stuff constantly or anything like that. But when I do, um, I like to make sure it's, it's good quality, that type of stuff. Maybe if you see something that's free on the side of the road, like a lawnmower or whatever, hey, you should pick it up, try to work on it, just kind of get those skills. And uh, you can eventually move on to bigger projects that cost a little bit more money because you'll be confident in your skills that you can fix this thing that you're dumping your money into. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.